and put a regular bike lock on it, it's not going anywhere. Mm. And there was a, there's a custom lock for this thing. I was trying to find them for Rolle. Uh When they had these in cities, there was a custom way you could lock. Oh, that's your phone now. And I'm trying to remember where the mount was. I think when they refurbished them, they took yeah, they took some things out. There was a outlet for something. There was a GPS on it. Oh, okay. So there was a tracker. So it's it's a basic e-bike with a front hub. That's a that's a if it says eight fun, that's the phone. Oh, and actually, some of them do say Bafong instead of uh -huh. Bafong, which is good quality motor, Tektro brakes, which is good quality brakes. So these things were originally probably about $3,500, $4,000. Yeah. And he's able to sell them refurbished for, I think it's eight seven, He said seven fifty. Oh, so, oh, special deal for us. Uh-oh, yeah. it's on the video. <laughs> Let me go ahead and get some helmets here. You want me to sign in for what? Yeah, can you put your hands on the steering bar? Do you see the steering wheel? This is the steering wheel right here. That's your steering wheel. Yeah, she can run it. Let me get it back. You want to sit? Really would you like to ride in? Sit on your hand like that. Would that be okay? Because we could, we could do. It. Would you feel okay with your grandma? Or do you want me to do it or your grandma? You do it. Grandma. Now I could. Um, Mr. Woolley here. He can show you how it works first, and you can see it, and then you can go on. You want to do it that way? Okay. Let me put the battery and then you sure. can Make sure that your legs on the pedals. Always. Push down. Yeah. All right. Let's and go. Just push down. Push down. Okay. Down. Let's go, Twelve years. Huh? Twelve years. Twelve years. years old. Twelve years. And you put it in its little box, and you go squat. You do your business. You fold it over, and you throw it somewhere it needs something to grow, because it has a selection of three types of seeds. It's either flowers, oh, indigenous wow. plants for the area, <laughs> or food crop: beans, uh, corn, and squash. This is his Cool. So, so, have you seen those toilet seats that get in your bumper? <laughs> I don't have that. <laughs> My box is catchy. Today you have these big panels like this, and a breezy day like today, you're you're risking right. it. We've got lights on the other side, so it's a really handy emergency yeah. type thing. We've been trying yeah. to uh, get uh, sheriffs, departments, etc., so they don't have to keep their engine running all the time <laughs> when they're when they're stopped. Yeah. Um, and, and it you know for emergencies, and they have emergencies all the time. It oh, covers yeah. a lot of a lot of issues. And if their car goes dead, they plug it into this and run their um, their communications again. Oh, I know it is. Can you put your foot over a little bit that way? Yeah, where those footprints are. Her feet weren't quite on the pad. She's doing great. I really should put the helmet on her head. Now, this is actually my granddaughter's helmet. Would you like to try it? No. We ought to have a helmet when we're on the, out here on the driveway. Because this adjusts for her too. Hi, I'm Jack Martin with the Triad Electric Vehicle Association. Behind me is my 2013 plug-in Prius. Now, this only has a four kilowatt hour battery pack and it'll only give me about 12 miles of pure electric energy, but the vehicle itself has averaged about 54 miles per gallon since I've had it. So you can see I have my nice little notes in here, Toyota Prius plug-in 2013. Uh, it gets about 12 miles as pure electric. I've done about uh, 12,000 miles as pure electric in it. It takes two hours to recharge. And one of the favorite things I like about this is I can go camping in it. And I'm gonna show you how you can do the same. Now there's plenty of room inside a standard Prius for a person up to six foot six to stretch out and sleep in if you move the passenger seat forward and then you put like three Sterilite containers of your food or your clothes or whatever in that well, you can put your bed right across it. This is a Thermarest, which is a very standard type of, of mattress that's used. 
And what most people fail to realize is you can just get a standard uh, mosquito netting that goes over a single bed, put it over the hatch and close this and now you've got lots of free air and no bug problems. And it's not a big deal to do. In fact, I'm using the plug in here to hold this. So we can uh, move this off of the hitch, stretch this up, and you can see there's a thermal rest and I have room for another person or I can put my refrigerator. I can even put a microwave in here, believe it or not. The most wonderful thing about camping in a Prius is that it has air conditioning. You heard me right, air conditioning. Why? Because the Prius has air conditioning. It runs on the battery. When the battery gets down low enough, it will automatically start for about five minutes, fully recharge the battery for a couple of hours of air conditioning. You can also do that for heating. And you can put a thousand watt inverter, plug it into the battery pack, just the 12 volt uh, auxiliary battery pack connected to the traction pack. You can run a microwave off of that. So uh, talk about glamping. This is the vehicle that you can do it. I also have friends that have taken some receivers and put an elbow onto it and they put a table here so that they can have a place to eat. You can stretch a tarp across this and you can collect rainwater. So you've got your water covered. Uh, you can cover your waste uh, stream fairly easily by getting a box, putting waxed paper bags in it with a little bit of mycelium, fungus, oyster mushrooms, for example and some toilet paper, do your business, poop, pee, um, puke, whatever you need to do into that box. And uh, then all you have to do is find out where you wanna put it because it has seeds in it. So what happens is it starts breaking down, composting almost immediately, and it will create the conditions for those seeds to germinate. Now your seeds could be one of three types. The first type would be ornamental flowers. The second type would be indigenous plants that you're trying to get to grow in the area again. And the third one, of course, would be food. For example, corn, uh, beans that would climb the corn, and squash that would you know, suppress anything growing around it. So you've got some great food there. So, and that's just taking care of your water and wastewater problems. I'll show you what we can do with the electricity in just a second. So for power, this is an old 75 watt solar panel. This panel is about 20 years old. I've had it for a long time. Uh, I've used some Anderson clips to connect it so that it plugs into this Hemsen 500 watt uh, portable power system. Now this is really interesting. It has a maximum power point tracker so it will get as much energy that's available out of the solar and put it into the battery has a battery management system which will take sure, care of overages and underages of current, voltage, and temperatures. And uh, the other thing is I can plug in a multitude of DC things from computer chips, uh, memory chips, etc. And also we have an international uh, 500 watt pure sine wave inverter here with the international plug so that you could be even overseas and use it. And it's pretty straightforward you know, to put it in there and plug it in. Now, for what I'm using, I'm plugging it into my little Segway and recharging it. It's got enough power to keep my little balance of systems working here and give me some transportation. I could also do that with an electric bike. So this doesn't just end here. On the other end, it has three different types of lights, a flashlight, a nice fluorescent type light, but it's LED, of course, and then it can make signals so you can send SOS uh, or warning lights. This is sold by Hemson. He's a member of our Triad Electric Vehicle Association, Mr. Kim, who developed this. He has several of these. You can go on his website. You can buy this, balance of the systems, solar, and you're ready to roll. I have a 100-watt panel that's almost as big as this that I will put in my front windshield and support it with this unit, so I'm totally self-contained. So here you can go, camping, Anywhere you want, you've got your water, your waste, your electricity, your communications, it's all there. Thank you. So this Sung 1500 goes for about 800 bucks right oh, now. Oh, really? But the 2500 on the Indiegogo Kickstarter, when I got it, was 500. Whoa. Yeah, the 2500. How are they doing that? They were trying, I, I guess they were having some trouble funding it initially. They bumped it up. Now it's a thousand some. <laughs> So the original Kickstarter for the 2,500 watt, um, I think I added an extra 100 to get a 100 watt solar panel for it. Because mm -hmm. the inputs to these are unique. Um, for the, the 2,500 watt inverter, uh, the 2,500 watt battery pack with inverter is a 50 plus volt charging circuit. 
on the solar side, which is unusual for solar panels, right? Usually they, you can series. Yeah, so what they, they built one small 100 watt that they put more in series. So it's, it's like 56 or 60 watts, typical. Uh -huh. So this one, we've got the back end. Let's see the front end. So we have the typical thing every generator needs is a, is a bonding plug, a grounding plug. So, and that seems to be the thing that most people get caught on is without an actual ground, you need something to, because all these adapters have a safety interlock. Essentially, they're a built-in GFCI. And that safety interlock will not run unless it detects that it's grounded. Well, the way it detects it is to see our ground and neutral the same voltage. So the bonding plug fools it. So this bonding plug allows this battery generator uh, to run as if it were grounded. And the Tesla adapter detected that. Right now it's running at 12, 12 amps. So we're a level one charger, 12 amps, 120 volts. Um, a lot of AAA road services are getting the bigger version of these. In fact, that's the market that Sungzu, who makes this, their 2500 watt is really like a big rolling suitcase. You know, it's, it's more than twice the weight of this because this is a lithium poly, not, not lithium ferrous phosphate. The next one is lithium ferrous phosphate. It's lithium the, iron phosphate? Lithium iron phosphate, yes. Ferrous phosphate, which is fine, but some people might. Like so, yeah, lithium iron phosphate. Here are two okay. TIVA members planning, plotting hey, to overthrow the world with electric yeah, vehicles. Right, right. So you can see here we have a Bolt EV. And then this beautiful red Model 3. And a Model Y. coolant, motor, and Tesla Bill will turn around here and show how he gets his that huge frame of that man into this tiny, tiny seat. Uh, my name is Don Gerhardt, and I'm going to talk to you today about light electric vehicles and electric bikes. What we have here in front of me is an all-wheel drive electric bike. It has a hub motor in the front and it has a hub motor in the back. So this bike is ideal for on-road, off-road, for snow, terrain. You might think this as the SUV of e-bikes. Not only does it have two motors, it has two batteries. It has uh, one battery in front, a second battery on the rear, and they can be used individually or combined. And there's a switch on the bike. You can operate just the front motor, both motors, or just the rear motor. So uh, this is one of the newest e-bikes that's on the market. It's made by a company called E-Cells. And uh, it has uh, Bafang motors, hub wheel motors, uh, so you don't have the uh, extra tension going into the chain that you have from a mid-drive. This bike is popular for a lot of outdoor people, people who like to ride in the mountains, in the snow, uh, hunters. It has enough torque, it almost can be used as a tractor, so you can have a small uh, sled or trailer and pull your de deer stand into the tree. If you get a deer, you can put the deer on the trailer and pull it back out again. Also, it's great for rescue, for uh, uh, repair of bicycle trails. Uh, so it's an overall universal bike. And it's one of the new style of bikes uh, that are becoming available. What's this here? OK, so it's got a shock absorber system on the front. And it's got a shock absorber system on the rear. 
So what we have here is a typical heavy duty mountain suspension on it. And you may have noticed the, uh, the depression on it. There's a ring here that if you put it down at the bottom and you ride it off road and you hit a bump, it will move this ring up so you can tell the amount of depression of the, uh, of the shock system. And it's adjustable. You can lock it in or lock it out. And this? Okay, uh, this is the display. It tells you the voltage. It has a control panel. This bike has both a throttle, uh, which is located here, and it's called what's called a pedal assist system. A pedal assist system, it measures the amount of energy or speed of rotation of your pedals and it multiplies it. So it has a sensor. If you want to, you can get up close and you can see the magnets in this. Uh, it's called a cadence sensor. Mm -hmm. So it has a number of magnets, maybe 11 magnets around. So as you pedal, they rotate and there's a sensor that senses the magnetic field and it tells the controller that the person's pedaling. And what this, does that do? Uh, well, it's very popular in, in Europe. And what it does, it takes input from your pedals and then the controller applies uh, a voltage and electrical power to the motor. And the amount that's applied depends on your setting that you set on the display panel. In addition to the pedal sensor, it has a throttle. You can use a throttle. So the throttle's nice if you're stopping on a hill and you have to get started up a hill or if you want to accelerate from a stop. The pedal's nice if you just want to pedal along and you won't, don't have to hold the throttle. So this bike has just about all the options on it that you need for an e-bike. How about stopping? How does that work? Oh, <laughs> this is a nice system. It's got hydraulic brakes on both the front and rear. So uh, this is the left uh, front brake. The front brake does most of the stopping in a bicycle and in a car. Uh, so I recommend the first time you to ride the bike that you test the brakes because they're very, very strong brakes and they're sensitive and you want to know uh, how fast that you can stop. So when you first ride an e-bike, I recommend that you uh, test the front brake first, then the rear brake, then test both brakes together. And these are disc brakes? Yes, it's got disc brakes on the front and on the rear. And, and those here's, are large. Yes, these are oversized brakes because this is a two-wheel drive, multi-purpose vehicle. So if you want to see the disc brakes, you can see them from this side. Here's the large diameter hydraulic disc brake on the front. There's the front. And we have Mark Smith with us, joining us. Uh, you want to explain your uh, vehicle that you have? <laughs> uh, we have a mini Segway here, a Segway model uh, Mini Pro. And uh, we've been using these as demonstrations for years. This is really kind of the low end light electric vehicle. And then we get this, which is getting into the high end light electric vehicle. But the principles of understanding them, how to maintain them, are very similar. So we can teach one course that teaches the basics from a scooter like this, a self bouncing scooter up to what really is becoming a motorbike. An off-road. Off-road, technically, yeah. We're ready. <laughs> okay. You can shoot this while we're doing it here. Okay. So when I uh, train people to ride, a, ride an e-bike, I first have them operate the bike in a manual mode. Test the left brake, test the right brake, learn how to shift it and so on. Once they understand that, and then I have them proceed with the electric portion. So on the electric portion, uh, what you do, there's a button here, it's an M, or a circle, which is the universal system for turning on. It may be difficult to see, but 
that's the screen coming up. And when it comes up, it comes up with the miles per hour. This has a pedelec system. Now, when it first comes up, it's on level one. I first recommend that people use this plus or minus key to shift it to level zero. Okay. That way, if you bump the pedal or turn the pedal while you're stationed, the bike won't take off. Okay. And uh, how does so, it select between one wheel and two wheel drive? Okay. There's a button here. One, two, and three. Mm -hmm. So one is front wheel drive. Two is both. Two and three is rear. So when you first start off, I recommend that you just have it on uh, two wheel drive. Okay. Excuse. Okay. Uh, and it has a trigger shifter. You use this to shift the level, and I think it has 11 speeds on it. Yeah. But for just general usage, you can just leave it in close to the center, and that way the chains align. Okay. Okay. Now, let's check your seat to see if it's the proper height for you. I believe it is. Okay. Now, normally when you first ride an e-bike, you want to have the seat a little bit lower than you normally ride mm -hmm. and make sure your feet can touch Flat. touch the ground. Okay. And it's got a good suspension system on it. So if you hit bumps, it will lower a little bit. Okay, so there's the kickstand. Okay, so what I first want you to do mm -hmm. is to just pedal it okay. and get used to it, and the brakes and so on. And then when you're ready to ride it, change this to level one and the way you do that you push the plus air okay. and one will show up if you want more force you can go up to two i think this may go up to nine or so let's <laughs> just see so one two what do you see so far I'm not seeing nine. Nine. Oh, so I So this is nine. Six, but five, four, three. We're gonna two, put it one, back zero. to zero. That's one zero. Now, Dr. Martin has ridden many e-bikes before, yeah, so I he'll do fine. <laughs> okay. He's got it on. Hello, are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, my name is Don Gerhardt. I'm here at the Danville Community College Re Regional Center for Advanced Technology and Training. And I'm going to be uh, telling you a little bit about Danville Community College and the courses on e-bike technology. Uh, we developed the first course here about 10 years ago on advanced lithium batteries. Uh, that course evolved into a course on e-bikes and light electric vehicles, which is certified by the Light Electric Vehicle Association. Uh, Danville is known worldwide for their work with light electric vehicles and e-bikes. And once a year in the fall and October, uh, we have an updated course that takes all the worldwide technology uh, and we apply it to the course here at Danville, uh, Virginia. Okay, um, my name is Wally Ajala. I'm a STEAM educator in the public school system. I have a nuclear engineering background and uh, I've been teaching for over four decades. And I have this program for the kids, which I call uh, Make and Donate, using uh, mathematics and physics to do make toys for the underprivileged kids in the community. Well, apart from that, I have a, um, the electric vehicle section. We actually are bringing the kids, show them the in and out of how to apply math and science in the field of uh, electric vehicles. So right now I have, a, I have the ELF, which I, mine is a 2015 ELF. And actually, and I have two ELFs. This is the 
uh, the original version. Then I have the Naked Elf that actually has no shell on in there. And uh, these are the blue bikes, the blue bikes. It used to be uh, rental bikes by Uber, but they are out of business. So I cover the East Coast in selling this. For, it goes for $750 a piece. It has a, um, a top speed of 20, about 30 miles top speed, and has a range of about 40 to 80 miles in there. Then I, for the Elf, the Elf can actually go longer because actually it's, it's solar powered and it has the 350 watts uh, for the for the electric uh, motor there and this version is called the solo version of it is a single seater we have other versions that can take two people two passengers in there easily <clears throat> so that that is my mobile trailer if the mobile workshop where actually I take these to schools, we do um, a workshop for the kids in how to do woodwork and then we make uh, 5,000 toys every year through that program. We meet once a month in downtown Greensboro. But actually, and at the end of the year, what we make, the 5,000, we give them for Toy for Tots, Salvation Army and other non-profit organizations to kind of help us distribute to the underprivileged kids in the community. So that it's a two-way thing I do for the trailer. I use it for a mobile church for the homeless. So on Sundays as a pastor, so I designed this as a mobile church. Actually, the kids, uh, the the homeless come around, and then we do the service in there, and then I do the feeding on Wednesdays for the Bible studies in the community in Greensboro. <laughs> Thank you.